Now that we're writing specifications and thinking about how clients will use our methods, let's talk about how to, handle, how to handle exceptional cases in a way that's safe from bugs and easy to understand. So remember that a method signature, its name, its parameter types, and its return type, are all a core part of its specification. And that signature in Java and in many other languages can also include exceptions that the method might trigger. So you've already seen some exceptions probably in your Java programming or in your Python programming before that. A couple of examples of common exceptions are array index out of bounds, which you'll get when you try to index into an array using an index that's outside of its valid range, or null pointer exception, which happens when you try to call a method on a null object reference. We talked about that a little earlier in this reading. These exceptions, these kinds of exceptions, array out of bounds and null pointer exceptions, are generally bugs in your code. They're things that you don't expect to happen and don't want to happen. The information displayed by Java, the stack trace that is shown when the exception is thrown, can help you find and fix the bug that led to that wrong array index or to using that null pointer. Array index and null pointer are probably the most common exceptions you'll, you'll see of this kind. Other examples are arithmetic exception, which can happen when you divide by zero, um, or number format exception when you uh, try to parse a string that is not actually a number. So those are typically examples of bugs, but there's another kind, another way that exceptions are used. Not just for signaling bugs and helping you find them, but more intentionally, more as part of your design to help improve the structure of your code and have procedures, have your methods signal that they have special results. Now, we're going to contrast using exceptions for special results against another common way that, of handling special results that actually dates back many, many years ago to uh, earlier programming languages that did not have exception handling, typically C uh, uh, and, and old versions of C++. Um, and these, this approach persists, and here's what you typically see. So a method returns an int, and you get a special value, like negative um, 1, uh, when something has gone wrong. Or you get a null reference when the method is supposed to return an object instead of returning an ordinary object. So this approach is okay if you use it sparingly, but it's not used very sparingly in practice, and it has two problems. First of all, it forces the programmer to remember to check that return value. And unfortunately, it's very easy for the programmer to forget to do that. So for example, if you're calling find and it's error behavior when it can't find the thing that you're looking for is to return negative one. Um, the programmer may just think, oh, I got an index back, I'm going to go ahead and use that index. And then, uh, and then that negative one is propagating through the program and maybe somewhere very far away from where they actually called find, it will actually, uh, it will actually throw an index out of bounds error. Or it may never throw any error at all and simply produce a wrong answer. So we've talked about that problem before. That's the failure to fail fast problem. So that's one problem with using special values as a way to signal uh, uh, unusual cases. Here's another way. Here's another problem. It may not always be easy to find that special value. So suppose we have, for example, um, a book of the birth dates of your friends. And so this is a class and it's supposed to represent that book. Um, you give it the name of one of your friends, it's supposed to return that person's birth date. Um, this is this local date class is part of the Java API. So just think of it as being a date, but it's an object. Well, what should we do if the birthday book doesn't have an entry for the person whose name is given? Well, we could return some special date that we're not going to use as a real date. In fact, bad programmers have been doing that for a long time. Um, in the last century, in the 20th century, it was not uncommon to return a date like this, since it was obvious that no program written in 1960 would still be running in 1999. So this was a perfectly safe thing to return as not a date. Turns out those people were wrong, and this caused a big problem when we rolled over from 1999 to 2000. Here's a better approach. Let's look up function when it can't find the person's name can throw an exception. And it's an intentional exception. It's one that we're expecting to get in many cases. Because it's not going to be unusual for us to try to pass a name to this uh, uh, birthday book and, and find that they're not in there. 
So this signature, the method declares that in addition to returning local date, one of the possible ways that it can return is by throwing this exception. And here's sort of a sketch of how it would look inside the body of that function. But from the caller's point of view, what they do is they first assume, well, everything's going to go fine, and we're going to find Alyssa in the book, and it's going to return a local date, and we can assign that to birth date and use it. But in some cases, we may not find Alyssa, in which case we have this separate catch clause that deals with the case where Alyssa's birthday is not found. So there's no need now for any special value. We don't have any nulls floating around this code. Um, we don't have any negative ones that might propagate. We don't have any invalid dates um, that might someday actually be valid. And the compiler is actually helping us check that we're handling all of these cases. And let's talk about that now. So we've seen two different purposes for exceptions. Special results, like in the birthday book we just saw, and bug detection, like null pointer exceptions. As a general rule, you'll want to use checked exceptions to signal special results and unchecked exceptions to signal bugs. We're going to talk about what checked and unchecked exceptions are right now. This is a general rule, but in the next section of this reading, we're going to refine this a bit because it's going to be a little bit too uh, strict for, for some purposes, and the Java library does violate this general rule. We'll talk about why. But first, what are checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions? So checked exceptions are called checked because the compiler will check them at compile time. That is, it will make sure that if a method might throw a checked exception, if it has in its body something like this, and not found exception is one of the checked exceptions, then the compiler is going to ensure that we declared throws not found exception in the method signature of the lookup method. So not found exception is we would make it a checked exception, and that's why the signature has that throws clause in it. And if we didn't have this here, then the compiler would say, uh, would give us an error and tell us we have to put that there. The second part of the checking is that if a method calls an, another method that has that might throw a checked exception, so here this code here, this client code that is calling birthdays.lookup, which has declared that it throws a not found exception, the compiler is going to ensure that we deal with that possible exception somehow in this code. And there's two ways to deal with it. Either we're catching it right here, and that's what this code is doing right now, or the other way to do it is to declare the exception in its own signature. So the method that contains this code here might throw not found exception itself if it wasn't catching it. And that's because the way exceptions work is if they're not actually caught here, then they will jump out of this method and propagate up to the caller. So checked exceptions, we have the compiler making sure that at some point we are dealing with that exception. This is really useful because it ensures that exceptions that we expect to occur, in other words, these special results that are a valid possible result of the method, even in the absence of bugs, they could happen, they will ensure that those are handled. Now, the other category of exception are unchecked exceptions, and we use these to signal bugs, and we don't have to declare them all the way up the chain because we don't expect them to happen in a correct program. We don't want every method up that call chain to have to declare that it might throw all the kinds of bug-related exceptions that can happen, like index out-of-bounds, null pointer exceptions, legal arguments, assertion failures. Any one of those could happen in the case of a bug, and so we actually want them to propagate up as far as, we, um, as, far as is reasonable and then catch them and, and report them to the programmer. So for an unchecked exception, the compiler will not check for a try-catch. It won't require a throws declaration. You can still write a throws declaration on your method signature for unchecked exceptions, but this has no effect. Uh, it's a bit funny. We don't recommend doing it, and some compilers will actually warn, warn you about it. Now, when you throw an exception, an exception may have a message associated with them, and it's a good idea to, to write a bit of a detailed message there so that uh, um, the user or the programmer understands what's going on. So we've said, we've made this distinction between checked and unchecked. What is that, how is that actually represented inside Java? How do we say whether an exception should be checked or unchecked? Well, it's done by saying which class, which kind of exception class, um, your exception is going to extend. And here is the class hierarchy of Java exceptions. So at the top, 
um, throwables are objects that can be thrown and can be caught. And there are two kinds of throwable. One is an exception, so this is a class um, that is the normal class that we use for uh, checked exceptions. Um, and errors are unchecked exceptions, but they should be reserved for uh, the compiler in the runtime system. So error belongs to Java, and programmers should not subclass error. And then runtime exception uh, is the superclass of unchecked exceptions. So the way that we distinguish between a checked and an unchecked exception, the way that we create checked or an unchecked exception, is if we want a checked exception, we're going to extend exception. If we want an unchecked exception, we're going to extend runtime exception. 